G'day folks, I'm Wayne from Land and Bay Fishing and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, if you get anything out of this video, make sure you hit that like button for me. Any questions at the end of it or during it, comments feel below and I'll definitely reply to your questions. What we're going to do today is just have a look at uh, how I select a spot to fish when I go beach fishing. So basically find a gutter, the elements that make up a gutter, have a look at what a gutter looks like at eye level, have a look at what a gutter looks like from the uh, uh, aspect of a drone or above it. So let me just begin with why you want to pick the right spots to fish. You'll absolutely improve your chances of fishing if you select a gutter. Not just any gutter, it needs to be a gutter that's within casting range. The best time to do this is at low tide. You find that right gutter, it's got a drain in it or it's got a couple of drains in it. And all of a sudden you've got a lot of structure where there's a lot of food being generated and you're more likely to increase your chances of catching a fish. So many people go fishing these days, just find a nice spot, park their car, throw the rod in and hope for the best. Well, they're the 90% of the fishermen that, if they're lucky, go home with one or two. It's the 10% of fishermen that pay a little bit of attention to where it is they need to fish and where the fish are most likely to hold up looking for food are the ones that are going to catch the majority of the fish. So as you're driving along the beach, the view you'll have will be mostly of the cresting waves. As you're driving along, you'll see the cresting waves coming up to the beach, probably only 10 metres away from where you're actually driving. Eventually, you'll get to see the cresting waves crest and then break and then move into a dark blue area before you get to a, a new crest onto a beach. And that's what you're looking for. That's most likely where you're going to find your gutter. So at eye level, you'll see the gutter as a dark blue area in between two sets of cresting waves, one near your feet and one a little bit further out, the outer bank. In this clip here, if we watch it just for a, a 30 second period or so, you'll see the cresting waves over the outer bank, you'll see them disappear, and then you'll see them roll again when they get closer to the shore. And that's what it is you're looking for as you're driving down the beach. The three main elements to look for to when you're looking for a good gutter is a good outer sandbar, one that you can most likely cast to and hit your bait on top of it. You want it to be close enough so that you can bring your bait back over, over the ledge and actually put the bait where the fish are most likely going to be feeding. It'll have a good deep gutter or trough. Some people call them gutters, others troughs. Well that trough, the deeper it is, the better it is. And to top it off, if it's got a really good drain or cutting, that makes it even more attractive to me because then you've got the points to fish as well. So let's talk more about that. Holding points for fish. You can see in this clip, you've got the gutter, the drain, the outer sand bank, and the wash at your feet. There's plenty of points here where you can prospect for fish and depending on the fish that you're targeting as to which ones are more likely to hold that particular breed of fish. Where I fish in southeast Queensland we fish for brim, whiting, dart and at night time you'll get tala and dew. Firstly the two points. These two points you'll get maximum wash for your buck. You get all the wash that comes off of those points, pushes any food that it might have stirred up in that sandbank off that ledge. And those two points are definitely two points that I'd try first up. In between those two points, you'll see the drain. That drain there is generally the deepest part of this whole system. That drain is often confused with a hole and sometimes is a hole. And that's also where the rips occur. When you hear somebody being washed out through a rip, it's generally that type of structure that they're being washed through. That drain is basically the highway in and out for all fish into this gutter. So they'll use that and that's a very good place to prospect for your bigger fish, the predators, and uh, also you'll catch all the smaller fish because they have to come in and out from that drain. So another great place to, to prospect. And then you've actually got the gutter itself. And right across that gutter, you'll have food being washed off of that outer sand bank into that gutter and the fish hold there waiting for that food to come over the edge. So that whole area is good prospecting. The two points 
and the, the drain are definitely my preferred. And then you've got the gutter. The depth through this gutter at low tide, you'll see where number one is. That number one is the outer bank. And that number one is between one foot and one and a half foot deep when the waves recede. As it crests and comes over the, the bank and washes and disturbs the sand, that's what pushes all the bait, that can be up to about two foot, two and a half foot in this particular breeze today. Obviously, if you've got an onshore breeze and it's blowing you know, a good 20 knots, those waves will be much bigger. There'll be a lot more disturbance. There'll be a lot more food washed in, a lot better prospecting and uh, you'll get a lot more food in that gutter. Today, very light winds, very small waves. That's what we've got, approximately about a foot deep. The actual cutting through there, the highway for the fish, that's the deepest section, as I said, and that section there is between four foot and five foot deep at low tide. The actual gutter itself ranges between three and six foot, just depending on where you're standing in that gutter. The deeper the better when it comes to fishing in my opinion for gutters so if you can find a nice deep gutter your chances increase dramatically so in summing up find a close gutter that you can cast to you want to be able to reach it at high tide so go prospecting at low tide find a good gutter make sure it's not going to be too far away for you at high tide and stick with it the deeper the gutter the better it is as you drive up you'll see four five six gutters Look for a gutter with as many cuttings as possible and as deep as possible. Don't forget that the drains or the cuts are the best areas to target. So fish those drains and uh, you'll find your chances increase dramatically. Low tide is definitely the easiest time to go hunting for gutters. So uh, treat yourself to a drive along the beach at low tide. Look for the gutter you want to fish at high tide and stick with it. Well, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit that like button if you got something out of this video. If you haven't already subscribed, and I'll catch you on the next video.